Okay. Brain talk. Yeah, brain talk. Okay, so yeah, so the project that I've been working on uh, is uh, about conjunctive encoding and the dentate gyrus. But before I get into what all of that means, and just talk about memory in general. So memory conceptually is bringing together multiple pieces, pieces of an experience um, together into one cohesive unit in the brain, one that can be accessed later on. Uh, and how that happens is very interesting, and it's, you know, it happens at many different levels. Um, but in general, um, yeah, in general, that's something I find really interesting. Um, there are many different types of memory, one of which is episodic memory. Episodic memory in general is the memory of events. It's kind of the type of memory that we're probably all most familiar with. It's, you know, what did I have for, what did I have for breakfast this morning? Or, you know, what did I do that one day in elementary school many, many years ago? Uh, that's episodic memory. And uh, the center of episodic memory in the brain is the hippocampus. Uh, and the hippocampus is a brain structure uh, within, um, within the brain that's fairly consistent between um, um, many mammal species. Uh, and within the hippocampus, uh, there, there's lots of stuff in the hippocampus, but one very noteworthy of cell is called a place cell. A place cell is, is a cell that fires specifically when you or an animal, or you, you know, um, are in one specific spot of an environment, an environment you've been in before. So as you move across an environment, the, uh, the, a place cell will only fire when you're in that spot. So there'll be lots of place cells. So if you were a rat, as he is here, as a rat would run along this catwalk, uh, one a catwalk he's been on before, um, as he progresses through it, a diff different cells will fire, and that's what these different colors are. So when the rat's you know head is right where the pink is, that pink cell will fire, and down here, this red cell when the rats down here will fire down there. And that's what a place cell is. And place cells are really important for episode, or really important to the hippocampus, because the hippocampus, in combination with um, episodic memory, um, also does spatial memory and spatial processing and navigation. So place cells are, of course, very crucial to forming that cognitive map, a cogn cognitive map of an environment uh, that you use to navigate. Another uh, important type of cell in, that has been found in the hippocampus um, are conjunctive cells. Conceptually, conjunctive cells are when two conditions are met at the same time, the cell will fire. So earlier there was a place cell. The place cell fires when you or an animal, or, you know, or when you're at a specific location, the cell fires. Conjunctive cell, two conditions have to be met. For instance, the, uh, the, the most commonly studied form of conjunctive cell, or at least the one I'm most interested in, um, in the hippocampus are odor place cells. So, for instance, if a rat has been in this environment before and he smelled strawberries in the environment, um, and he's also been around the entire place, so he's been in this one specific corner, he might have a conjunctive cell that fires when he's in that corner and when he's smelling strawberries. If he's just smelling strawberries, the cell won't fire. And if he's just in that corner, the cell will still not fire. But when both of those conditions are met, the cell will fire. So as I said, this kind of conceptual representation of this, one condition is met and not the other, no firing. The other condition met but not the first, no firing. But when go both conditions are met, for this, in this instance, an odor, and a place cell, you get this conjunctive firing. So how do we look at that? I've been mentioned, talking about rats a lot, and that's because we use rats. Uh, rats are an excellent way to, because you can look at their neural activity at the um, level of individual neurons, individual brain cells. And the way we do this is we, we want to make them form memories and recall memories. So the way we do that is having them form an odor discrimination task. Effectively, what that is, is we put them on this little maze here, and we, expo we open up one of these arms, and at the end of the arm are two odor ports. Um, during a trial, uh, one, uh, the, be, uh, there, it's gonna be an odor pair, and one port will be one of the odors of the pair, and the other port, the other odor. So the rat will go up to the end of the, end of the wall, and he'll poke his nose between the, uh, in each port, in which case he will be smelling the, sm smelling the odor in each port, and he has to choose which one's correct. 
This is something he learns over the course of many trials. The correct order depends on what context he's actually in. So if he's in, on the on a if he's on a arm with a bamboo mat, the smell of strawberries might be the correct odor, and that's one, the one he wants to choose so he gets a reward. But in another context, the black rubber mat, it might be the smell of cedar that's the correct uh, the correct odor. So he has to form these memories uh, to be able to do the task correctly and get the reward. So ultimately, we do do this over many different contexts and many different odors, so we can form many different memories and get lots of different lots of data. So down to the neural architecture and um, of it all. So this is a um, this is a slide, a um, a section of a rat brain, and up the top is a hippocampus in a rat. The you know sectioned off area. And this is uh, the bottom picture is a, um, is a close-up view of the hippocampus. So the general flow of information in the hippocampus goes from the, well, I mentioned it briefly, the dentate gyrus to CA3 to CA1. So what you need to know from that is that conjunctive encoding, we've been talking about the two conditions met, are met in the cell fires. Those kinds of cells have been found to exist and CA3 and CA1. CA3 or CA1 are fairly well studied in comparison to dentate gyrus. Dentate gyrus is kind of annoying. It doesn't fire very often. It's kind of harder to access, so um, especially due to the fact that it doesn't fire as often, CA3 and CA1 are much more commonly studied. However, this leads to the... Sorry. These are the names of individual neurons? No, these are the, uh, the names of in, uh, area, the subregions within the hippocampus. So they're kind of sectioned off based on the kind of cells that are there that aren't too easy to tell um, from this picture, like the black bit are cell bodies, um, so, but those just kind of go around in a pattern. So it's just kind of Tente gyrus is over here, CA3 is over here, CA1 is over here. So yeah, so um, the cells will you know, connect to each other. Uh, you know, along the course of these arrows to these different subregions, and you know, pass along the signal. You know, with different processes processing going on uh, as the um, uh, as the information goes downstream. So, since we know that, um, that um, these, this conjunctive encoding occurs in CA1, we recorded from CA1, but also from the dentate gyrus. So, since we recorded from CA1, we have something to record from. But of course, crucially also recording from uh, dentate gyrus, which we commonly refer to as DG. So DG, um, from dentate gyrus, we got 134 active cells. That's not a lot in comparison to CA1, which had almost 600, and we recorded from the same, um, the same regions for the same amount of um, um, tetrodes, or electrodes. And after getting all that data, this is what we got for CA1. So in CA1, we found that 20% of the cells were actually sensitive specifically to odors. So when the rat would smell a specific odor, the cell would fire for that odor. Half of the cells fired based on position, which isn't really surprising, because it's position are place cells, um, cells that fire based on the location the rat's in. And that's not, yeah, so that makes perfect sense. Uh, we also found block, um, Block sensitivity, block is just what part of the task it is. So pretty much like which odors in general be, are being presented at the time. And also like what the floor looks like. Um, but the important bit are conjunctive cells. 20% of the cells in CA1, which we knew these existed, were conjunctive cells. Odor, position, conjunctive cells. That's interesting, but we kind of knew that existed. Dentate gyrus, however, is interesting. At a glance, it's pretty clear or at least kind of noticeable, these are fairly similar uh, proportions that these different um, cells made, made up, which is kind of interesting because it was kind of assumed that they'd have different function. And at, at least from this um, analysis, it's not. Because if you statistically, um, if you test for statistical significance, the proportions are not significantly different. Um, so just like CA1, there are cells that are um, sensitive to odor. There are cells that are sensitive to block. There are cells that are sensitive to position. And there are cells that are conjunctive cells. And so seeing here, we found conjunctive cells. Conjunctive cells are exciting because conceptually, it's bringing together two pieces of information and pulling it into one. That's 
at a basic level, the formation of memory. Memory has to be formed by pulling these pieces together. Um, so that's exciting. So we know that at least the, the first part of the hippocampus upstream, we know that this kind of processing is already starting there. And so yes, what does this mean? So as I just said, the, the dentate gyrus does have these um, odor place conjunction cells, um, which is cool because the dentate gyrus, which has, as I said, has not been given a lot of focus um, and is often um, just focused as something that kind of discriminates between similar uh, experiences, may actually be driving the circuit more than expected and plays a bigger role. That's something, that idea, something that would have to be um, and is going to be um, um, pursued more um, in the future using more causal methods like uh, if you remember Ravi does um, his projects about optogenetics they have a similar neural version of that in which you can make cells um, silent or active based, shining, based on shining light on them. So that is probably where the future of this kind of um, dentate gyrus um, conjunctive encoding and dentate gyrus driving downstream circuits in general that's probably where it's going to go. And more conceptually, on a broad level, in general, these kind of studies uh, are useful because, um, if, if you want to be a practical person, uh, because it provides a better understanding overall of our memory systems. Better understandings, this kind of basic research lends itself to future impact on treatments of memory disorders, especially, for instance, Alzheimer's and the like. So thank you very much. Time for questions? Uh, three minutes for questions. Okay. Um, I, my first question is, um, so the, do you think of the, conjunction, the conjunctive cells as, as kind of a, like associations? Like, because you were saying, you're saying that you're setting out to build memories yeah. for the rats. Mm -hmm. Are you building associations, say, between like strawberry and, and a certain place? Well, if it were a simple association, then it would fire anywhere. Okay. Uh, and you say, oh, it's eliciting this memory of a place, and it's not doing that. It's I it seems to be. Meant, like, but, 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 uh, I'm wondering, like, an association between a place and an, and an odor. Mm -hmm. Is that how? I don't know. Uh, in general, that kind of mm, associated class, like classical conditioning. Uh -huh. I think you're trying to get at. That's not that's not really processed much in the hippocampus. That's more okay. of a. Okay. Uh, I think cerebellum is more involved with that. Um, so I think it's more. Conceptually, you're having to do just pulling, um, pulling together two pieces, two stimuli, two piece, two features into one, into one unit. Okay, I guess yeah. I was just, then I, then I was, that's what I was trying to get at is like, in what way is that making memory? Like, in, or what, why does memory have to be formed by pulling stimuli together? Well, because if you're experiencing the world, uh -huh. you're not absorbing the entire, the entire understanding of what's going on around you. Right. There are many sensory streams coming into you. You have your vision, um, you have your smell, you have your taste and feel, and um, many other um, parts of the senses. And that all has to be then brought back together. Okay, okay. And so how that happens, yes, how that happens okay. um, is interesting, at least for me. Well, that was, yeah, that's my question too. Like the difference between us and rats mm -hmm. in terms of memory, mm -hmm. uh, is it a big difference? Is it, I mean, well, are, and which, what about the, the idea of there being like two systems in the brain oh, yeah. that work together? One being like the, the uh, perceptual system and the other being the conceptual system? Or, I mean, what's... So, con uh, the conceptual as in like, you th saying like conceptual as in like having an, like a representation, like, because I, I if I wanted to, I can, I can just think about oh, that time I scraped my knee on my bike when I was eight. I mean, I like that's a, con that's a very big concept and how, how is that formed? Uh, well, or that is like, that's a more cortical thing that where it's taking all, all different areas in your neocortex, the more complex, newer, you know, the parts that represent words, parts that represent vision, uh, images, um, and that's all together in the neocortex, kind of like kind of near your upper part of your skull. And that's a very diffuse, very difficult to study thing. Um, and so the memory, this isn't the memory. This is like, this is like a key, I guess, is a better way to, to access the memory, a gate. And, uh, and it, 
it's the in the hippocampus. Way. Yeah, and it's, it's and so we study this because it's a much more simple um, way to look at it rather than that very difficult concept. Yeah, yeah. Wow. it's kind of the beginnings of memory, or like the, kind of yeah, the, the, kind the, of. The, well, like it's the things that all living or that many living creatures who can navigate or something, which are. So we sure. have a much larger cortex than a rat. Oh yeah, okay. Okay. Ne neocortex. Yeah. Yes, yes. <laughs> okay. so, so we're out of time.